Okay, you're live and recording. Thank you, Sean. Are you making George host? Yeah. So seeing the presence of a quorum, um, it is 631 and I'm going to call this session of Town Services and Outreach Committee to order. Um, we are being recorded and I'm first going to um, well, actually, let me just read the introduction. Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted by remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone, and I can give instructions for that later if needed. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means just to see that everyone can be heard. Um, we'll start with Alyssa. Present. And Andy. Present. Thank you, and Paul. Present. Thank you, and Guilford, if you're there, just so we know we, you can hear us and be heard. Yes. Thank you, Guilford. And Sean, I think you were able to go away um, if you would like. Thank well, you. You're, sure, you're certainly good welcome night. to stay. But thank you. Nope. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> all right. So um, we have, uh, so first of all, I've been asked to serve as a, an interim or temporary chair for this evening. Um, our chair, Darcy Dumont, has been forced by family, for family reasons, to step away from the chairmanship. And so tonight I'm just stepping in for this one meeting. And um, that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. Um, and our vice chair, uh, Evan Ross, is uh, at a wedding. Um, he seems to be at weddings a lot lately. I don't understand. But um, anyway, so that's why we're where we are this evening. Um, we have general public comment uh, on the agenda. So let me just take a quick look and see if I can see. I see one attendee, and I see a hand up. And it is Tracy Zafian. So, I'm going to um, allow Tracy to speak. And Tracy, um, this is uh, public comment. So you have uh, three minutes and uh, please identify yourself and your address and then please speak. Okay, so you know, hi, this is Tracy Zafian. I'm the chair of the TAC. I live in precinct four. Um, I used to I used to become a panelist, but I guess I'll just get used to being this way. So um, the TAC just, um, we did have a TAC meeting scheduled for today. We did not have a quorum, mm -hmm. but a subgroup of us met to discuss the North Pleasant Street project from Halleck to Triangle Street. Um, I noticed that this is on your agenda, so if you don't want to get into too many details, I can always stay and, so maybe, add yeah, more details Tracy, well, and Guilford was there too. Yeah, good. So maybe when we come to that, which will be very soon, um, we'll just, uh, you can stay where you are. And, um, but uh, no reason for you to go into it now. It might make more sense to yeah. bring it in when we turn to that discussion. Right. I guess the main question, um, sure. one main comment from the group that was there tonight is that. Um, um, one of the TAC members who lives in the neighborhood like really does think that it makes a big difference on that street when um, the students are back mm -hmm. and the students will be, you know, moving in at the end of August. So we are definitely interested in having an extension in terms of mm -hmm. us reporting back to the TSO. So. Good. So you definitely would like an extension, a time extension. And we can um, we can speak mm -hmm. to that more if you want me yeah. to speak later. Okay. Okay. Good. Thanks. All right. Um, so I see no one else in the public present. I see, so we're going to uh, move on to action items. We do not have any town management appointments this evening, um, but we do have a, a sizable number. And um, again, I don't know if we want to take it up now, but we are, I believe maybe we should just make this decision together, the three of us formally, that we are going to have a special meeting of TSO uh, a week from, and I'm sorry, Monday, uh, which is September, uh, August 9th at 6.30. Um, and we will be taking up town manager appointments at that point. I have uh, canvassed the other two members of the committee 
Um, so I don't know if we need to do anything formal, but um, so that's what we're, uh, the understanding is that uh, we will do that. Have you posted the meeting? Yes, uh, thanks to Alyssa who stepped into breach. Um, the meeting has been posted and um, all the appointments are there with the names. And so um, we're set to go. And the only item on the agenda would be the town manager appointments. And hopefully that would not take uh, uh, too much time. It certainly will take some time because there's a sizable number of them. But um, Alyssa, your hand is up, go ahead. Yeah, Angela really scrambled to support doing that because when I originally volunteered to George, oh, I know how to post meetings. It's not, I just haven't done it in a while. And then it was like, oh, right, Zoom reality, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't know what the Zoom link is. I don't know what the phone call information is. And I actually don't know how to attach the all the names to the agenda. So Angela quick figured all that out for us and made it happen. So that was great. Um, I did, in fact, if you see the meeting notice come across, I did in fact include continuation of the items we're discussing tonight in terms of the public way in case something came up right, like no, between exactly. now and then just to give us the flexibility. Although I totally understood that the intent of the meeting was just to be able to address the appointments so that we'd have a recommendation in time for the town council on August 23rd, because otherwise we wouldn't have had another meeting until after the town council's August 23rd meeting. And so therefore we'd be bumping up against that 30 day window that we have in the charter for uh, town manager appointments. Plus, obviously we wanna get people up, you know, appointed as quickly as we can. So if there is something that comes up tonight, like associated with planning for the hearing or whatever, we, we have that covered on the agenda for okay. Monday night in case we need to talk about a little more. Okay, thank you. Andy. Yeah, just following up on what Alyssa just said, there was one appointment that came very late to the council before the last council meeting and that uh, was the acting uh, or interim director for the uh, health department. And uh, so it never got acted on by the council or referred. And I just wanted to note that that's a 14 day uh, window in the charter and uh, 14 days will have expired. So I, I just note that for the record, but I don't think there's anything we can do, and I'm not sure there's anything we would do. Uh, Paul, you have a hand up, go ahead. So the council doesn't have to take action on temporary appointments uh, until after 150 days. So temporary appointments are done and with notification. I'm just looking for the section um, right now. In the charter? Yeah. yeah. That was my understanding, but, um, okay. uh, but it would be nice to, and I should probably note it, and I can find it later where exactly that is, um, both for my own memory and for our records. But my understanding was we don't actually um, act um, that they are in place for, you said how long, Paul? It's 100 and- I think it's 150 days. 150 days, okay. Well, I will find that. Yeah, I don't need, to, if you find it later, you can just yep. pass it on to us. But um, Alyssa, your hand is still up. It's in 3.3B. Thank you. 3.3b. Thank you. Okay. So, yeah, so, if so I can just add, so it says when the town manager designates a person under this section, the town manager shall file a certificate with the town clerk. Okay. Mm -hmm. But it, and it, yes, and that's 150 days, yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, next item on the agenda is the town manager report updates and council questions. Um, I, everyone has seen Paul's report. There was a lot going on. Um, I was taking copious notes on it. I, the only question I have, Paul, for you, um, I keep running into grandparents in, in uh, District 3. And they, they accost me and they are very, very uh, passionate about the Kendrick Park playground. Mm -hmm. And they want to know when it's going to open. And I yeah. keep putting them off and putting them off. And a um, bit of a smile here, but just curious if, if, if getting any closer yeah. So to reality. Yeah, I think the contractors that they have a punch, they're doing punch list items now. Um, mm -hmm. 
the there's a I think they have to do some hydro seeding. Um, I talked with the council president about doing a ribbon cutting the week of August 23rd. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And then we're hoping, um, well, you know, in terms of the first night for schools, we're hoping that the superintendent will consider doing it at Kendrick Park this year um, oh, because okay. the community fair will be on the common and yeah. we'd love to sort of um, advertise this section and the bid is very excited about offering that as an opportunity as well. Okay. I'm not sure if he's open to that or if he's interested in that, um, but oh. it's an idea. So yeah, so, you know, at the latest, uh, the week of August 23rd, would, if we can get it open before that to get it, I mean, Guilford may have a better sense of things um, mm -hmm. since, since mm -hmm. he's, he's managing the project. Right. Um, I forgot you yes. were there, Guilford. Yes, I, I think the week of the 16th is when the everything, all the fencing will come down and it'll open up. They did hydro seed it uh, day, two days ago. Okay. They mm -hmm. finished the hydro seeding. So we'll give the grass a little time that's inside the fence to maybe start growing a little bit. And then uh, there's just a couple little things left to do. Well, it looks beautiful. And um, the other day, um, hopefully you won't turn me in, but the one piece of the fence was actually not there. It was just the yellow tape. Mm -hmm. And uh, I thought as a counselor in District 3, I could, so I ducked in and just sort of took a little preliminary tour. And it really looks lovely. So thank you. congratulations to, to you, Guilford, and to all the people who've been working on it. And uh, it's true, I do get a fair number of grandparents well, desperate to take the grandchildren uh, somewhere and they're really excited. So anyways, good news. And uh, that was my question, um, somewhat selfish. Anyone, any other questions related to the town manager's report? Alyssa, please. Definitely helps when there's only three of us here. That's true. <laughs> Darcy usually has a list of questions. Um, so, one of the things I mentioned to Paul in passing and that I think is an upcoming TSO issue, so I debated whether or not to put it here or under uh, future agenda items, mm -hmm. is I'm looking at my phone from when I copy and pasted it earlier. In the charter, which I know we all have memorized, under section 6.1, there's a section called reorganization of town agencies. And it talks about if you are reorganizing, consolidating, abolishing, or establishing new town agencies. And I believe that both Cress and the DEI director would separately be fall under creation of new town agencies. So I'm just putting it out there that as far as I know, we're gonna need to go through the 6.1 process associated with that. It does not appear to be a horribly intensive process, but it is something that we need to be aware of as those hires are being made. And it does talk about being referred to the appropriate council committee. And I assume finance committee might have something to say about that, but certainly town services, because we talk, because you know that's kind of the name, town services would be another committee who would be receiving that proposal. It's one of those, um, uh, I should say one of those things because we have a variety of little different kinds of things in the charter, but in this particular case, it's a plan is proposed to the town council. The town council says, it goes off to committee, the committee makes a recommendation back to the town council and the town council either says yes or no. So I'm guessing Paul will be talking to Lynn about how he wants to do that so that he can include the things that the town council wants included so that we can say yes to it. <laughs> and so that there isn't this rejecting of a reorganization plan. Um, it's always an awkward sort of position when it says all you can do is say yes or no. Um, so that's why you develop it in conjunction to begin with. But I know at this point, obviously the focus is on hiring amazing people for positions, but I believe that that section of the charter will need to be invoked at some point in that process. And I'm not exactly sure of the timing on that. I was gonna ask what the timing might be, but I, I can see it's, it, it's gonna take some reflection and some consultation, but yeah, the just, timing, yeah, Paul? So yeah, so along those lines, so the, I think the timing will be okay. I, um, the time sensitive piece will be the um, Crest program because we are anxious to get the program director hired as quickly as possible so they can go out and start recruiting community responders. And the community safety working groups have been working with um, the implementation team and then um, urging them to get something, we just talked about it today, trying to get a job description for the program director completed by the end of next week. 
so that it can go to HR and they can start to do the rating and do all the things that need to happen. So we would be looking for advertising on the week of August 19th, um, just because we have the February 1 deadline that the council put on for this. And um, I guess what I would, I can pull something together for the council um, on that program. I think it's relatively straightforward, but it, there's still a lot of details to be worked out. So I don't know what level of detail the council is going to be searching because this is a thing that we're building over the course of six, six months. Mm -hmm. DEI director position, uh, we have a matrix of all the DEI positions in Massachusetts um, in terms of, um, and that's basically a position in essence. So in terms of, I, I didn't really think of that as a department necessarily, um, but as a job. And, um, mm -hmm. but if the council's looking at, at that as a department uh, or agency, um, we will, we're probably on a similar timeline for the DEI, probably a couple of weeks later, because we have a lot of people who we want to have look at the DEI job description mm -hmm. um, as we, as we develop that, that's probably not going to be completed till end of the end of August, maybe beginning of September. Um, mm -hmm. And so that, that, those are the two things um, where the status of those two um, programs. When you talk about timing, Paul, are you thinking right now when you say with Cress, is just the desire to get some get someone in the position quickly? That's the timing pressure as opposed to um, a council committee, for instance, a TSO looking at the appointment. That appointment for Cress would not be considered a department head or not? Uh, we, to, well, we're not. No. Well, actually, yeah, that's a really good question. I was not even thinking about that as a department head. Um, because uh, it's not going to be at that uh, department head level, uh, right. the program director for it. Um, that's an excellent question. Whether they would fall under someone else and hence right. would be, right. Right, and, as opposed to that. Yeah. And unfortunately, the loss of our senior director has really complicated things pretty dramatically for us on this whole endeavor. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, we're not going to answer this tonight, but- um, Yeah, but it's really good well, questions. And these are good questions that Alyssa's yeah. raised, mm -hmm. and you've pointed out. Andy, your hand, please, go ahead. Yeah, I raised my hand, though some of the, what I was going to say has now been addressed. I really, in the end, it is a question of, are we hiring a position to be uh, supervised by somebody else within another department, or is it being proposed as a separate department? And I didn't know if there was a clear answer on that yet, but uh, it does make a difference as to how the section that Alyssa was referring to gets uh, pursued mm -hmm. and uh, uh, the, uh, I think the primary question about structuring uh, probably belongs to this committee and finance committee is really just talking about how we're redoing the budget in order to support in the new positions uh, and just to be able to uh, comment on it, but I would leave the major programmatic and structural questions to this committee. Uh, I have not consulted, however, with the Finance Committee in saying that. Okay. Well, is your hand is still up. Go ahead. Well, it's gone back up again because I think there is a differentiation to be made just, well, because, you know, we don't know. This first time we've done it. But I think there is a differentiation to be made between whether or not TSO needs to make a recommendation in the usual 14 day timeframe for a department head, which is one thing we have done before. Mm -hmm. And then separately, the reorganization, what, what falls under reorganization, even though it's not actually reorganization, it's addition, but addition is called out in the reorganization section. And so I can see that it is theoretically possible, just as it's been incredibly possible for us to do department head uh, recommendations with 14 days with, and there's been no reorganization, right? It's just been that TSO part of it, the appointment part. But on the other hand, it would also be possible to do reorganization without a department head. Mm -hmm. Those things do not necessarily go together. And so mm -hmm. because town agency under the charter includes the words department, division, or office. So that doesn't mean, so if Paul hires somebody that's not 
at the department head level. So it doesn't fall under our 14 day thing, but it's a new concept and it's not just, you know, an additional clerical position, for example, it's a new concept. I think that that falls under reorganization, but I don't think the actual hire would fall under our 14 day thing. So brave new world we're figuring out as we move this along. I just don't want anything because you've done so much work preparing for these things. I think it's really kind of a matter of repackaging it to some degree. And then all the information we already have, like Andy's talked about associated with the budget. And then the other part of it is not a firm decisions haven't been made in terms of who's going to report to what either yet, because you're partly figuring that out as you go. And so I think that it's all going to unfold very nicely, but the, I just don't want to make sure we don't lose sight of it so that we get to a point where we suddenly realize, oh gosh, we didn't do something. And we don't want that to negatively impact a hire of anybody or the work to proceed of anybody. We just want to make sure we took care of everything, set the ground for everybody. Right. That, so for, I mean, part of the trigger for moving forward was the council's vote on the budget, which include funding for these things. So um, so I guess it would be more like, well, now that we've said, yes, we want to do it with funding, we, we're serious about it, but now we want to see what it looks like. Okay. Andy, your hand, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I guess the other thing, and I, uh, my understanding all along was is that the plan was to build it up slowly but actually build it up with enough content that there could be actual substantive community response going on, but to um, sort of monitor the demand and work through the demand to decide really how many, what, what we needed in the end. And uh, so that it's really something that could be rolling out over a period of time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that we all, should understand that and help the community to understand that. I found it very interesting, and I'll leave it so we can get onto the other topic. Um, the article that somebody sent to the council about the Rochester, New York program, mm -hmm. and for a city of that size, they were um, talking about a volume of calls that was much lower than I would have expected it to be. And uh, so I found that. Um, that article very interesting mm -hmm. to reflect on as far as both excited about where we're going, but also the need for um, being careful as we move forward. So what I'm hearing, and please correct me, Andy, if I'm wrong or Paul, that, that, that there's going to be just by the fact of what's happening, an implement, implementation period where which things are just going to right, and that may take place for many, many months as we try and sort out what actually is, is working and what isn't before we would be at any stage to say, well, we've got, we're going to create a new department. Um, so, all right, and Alyssa doesn't agree. Good. So, Alyssa, what you're thinking now? You're thinking that we should, that should be clear from the get go that this is a new department, and hence that process should be started fairly soon. Um, Go ahead. Sorry. I think it really is largely what I just said about uh, repackaging the information we already have, right? Mm -hmm. Like we made certain decisions, we made we made policy recommendations, and then certain decisions on the budget based on information Paul gave us. You know, it's not like this is a he's presenting us a new department out of whole cloth, right? Like mm -hmm. we've been working through this, and so in order to conform with six point one, there's a public forum that has to be held by the TSO, I believe in this case would be the mm -hmm. right place. Mm -hmm. And so it's really, it, it's really going to be an opportunity to educate the public about how this is going to take a while and that we don't know what it's gonna look like at the end, right? Because based on the experiences, you know, this is what I'm doing right now to set us up for success. And then we'll see where it goes. And at that point, will we need another reorganization under 6.1? Probably not, maybe, I don't know. It depends on what it looks like, but we need it now. But I think it's largely a function of outreach and education than okay. it is more of a, because we're not going to say no at this point. Not exactly, not who you're like, saying. That's not going to happen. Right. So it's just, it's just a matter of going through the steps, not because it's, you know, it's just a checkoff and we don't care. It's it's going through the steps to show 
this is why we're doing what we're doing and it's going to be figured out. And the DEI could end up being similar, right? It, you, we might think it's going to be something to start with, but as it plays out with the individual that gets hired, it may kind of morph and it may or may not have employees under it. So um, I don't think we need to make a huge deal out of this. It's not like we're expecting a bound 365 page treatise with appendices or anything like that, because after all, it's the first time we're doing it. So we can figure out what we want. And I think it's a relatively low lift, which is good mm -hmm. because so many other things going on. I think we just have to do it and we can have that conversation. I'm obviously, Paul will work with Lynn and I'm happy to partake in that so that I don't say later, well, why didn't you do this? And, um, and we'll just make sure that we're all on track because as one of the things Paul pointed out that I think is really useful is that a lot of people do want to have eyes on various parts of both of these things, mm -hmm. including like the DEI director hire and whether and so the more people that are wrapped into that then the much easier it is to say at the end this is what we're doing and everyone's like yeah of course we already knew that so Alyssa, what i'm hearing is that that yes this should be taking place uh fairly early in the process matter of fact fairly immediately where paul gives something to tso tso would hold a public forum and the purpose would be as you just said uh, to for outreach and education to the public, while at the same time other things are happening. But this is the point of 6.1: is there's reorganization taking place, and the charter um, requires that we do this, and we should do it um, basically soon, sooner. Would you also envision that there would be a, also a second forum on the DEI position? Um, you think there would be two separate? I think they're separate. Okay. I mean, we could, in theory, do them at the same time. That's another. Yeah, right. But they're two very right because if yeah. that feels right yeah. to to people, but it does go to the council first, and then they refer it. Right. Exactly. So right. It, right. It, right. Would, it doesn't come to us. Keep it in our council. minds, right? Because right. you know how we have the lovely what what do we call it? We don't call it a parking lot because that would imply cars. But you know, our bicycle rack that we keep things in that we haven't scheduled yet is knowing that these things will be happening, but you make a good point in that in theory, there's no real reason why we couldn't have the forum on both issues at the same time, if that felt like it made sense to Paul okay. based on where he okay. was with okay. his process. And you do see that the DEI position and what's happening there falls under Charter 6.1. I see that clearly with uh, Cress, and, but I don't see it as clearly, which just may be me um, with the DEI. I see, tend to see that more as like a individual hire for a very specific, but you're suggesting that no, both of these are, involve a kind of basic reorganization that falls under 6.1. I think if we're doing it right, the DEI falls under 6.1. I think if okay. it's a clerical job, then we're not, then it's not the same. And so okay. um, I think okay. that given the level of import people placed on this issue, it is a separate thing, even if it ends up reporting to someone other than the town manager, which we don't even know for a fact yet. Right. Okay, um, any further comment or thoughts from any of you? All right, um, any further uh, questions or uh, for Paul and the town manager report? Yes, yeah, so, so I just would like to, I'm gonna oh, need to read six, I'm sorry, read 6.1 closer on the DEI um, role. Um, or do so. you see that quite the same way as, as uh, Alyssa does? Perhaps? I just haven't read as carefully, I'm sure as no. Alyssa has, so okay. I need to right. focus on that a little bit. Fair enough. All right. Um, we have two um, public way um, present, well, discussion items. Um, not sure about presentation. Um, we need, my understanding is what we need to do tonight, um, and Tracy's already sort of hinted to this, is um, make a decision about uh, TAC and where their input uh, is going to come into this. But I take it mainly what we need to do for the first item, which is the North Pleasant to McClellan Roadway improvements, is to uh, ideally set a public hearing date and to get a sense of what the schedule is going to be like. We do have a set of decision points that I believe everyone has access to, and I can put up on the screen if that would be helpful. Um, okay, good, I can do that. Um, but is that, um, let's see here. Okay, yeah, there it is. Okay, so let me just put this up on the screen. Um, 
So these are the decision points that uh, Darcy um, created, and she sent these to Tech. And uh, in a few moments, we may be hearing from Tracy about their thoughts on this, or actually, I think they want some more time to think about it. But this is these are decision points that were created from our last discussion. I don't know if um, we want to go over this again, whether we have anything to add, whether we have questions about this, or whether at this stage we are waiting to hear from TAC and before we return to our deliberation. So uh, I guess the first question is, do we wish to deliberate some more this evening or do we wish to um, first hear from Tracy about where TAC is at and then uh, perhaps see if we can come up with a process and primarily concerned with setting a public hearing date that we all can agree makes sense. So that's my first question. And Alyssa, your hand is up, so go ahead. So I'm not sure exactly where to go with this. It seemed, it seemed, it seemed almost too easy last meeting where we were like, oh, so tax gonna meet on such and such date and such and such date, and they'll be able to get us a report in time for this meeting and everything will work out great. And so we can schedule the hearing for September and it'll all be really straightforward. And then of course, reality sets in and it's difficult for a lot of committees to make quorum in the summer, especially if they're short some members. I'm also really, really cannot say strongly enough, really concerned that TAC discussed this without a quorum. That there aren't such things as posted meetings that you can then turn into an informal discussion. That That's just not really a thing with open meeting law. Mm -hmm. um, and so that makes me really uneasy. And so I'm not willing to, how do I say, entertain recommendations that come out of that kind of discussion. Okay. It needs to be recommendations that come out of a, a posted meeting discussion with a quorum and I totally understand. Again, I really value tax opinion. And so I want to get it. And so I want to make sure we do schedule things appropriately so that we can get their input, you know, enable them to have a real full discussion in public. I know the public might've been there for their non-quorum discussion, but I don't know why staff didn't just say, shut off the Zoom. We're going home now. That doesn't make any sense to me. So, um, I want to put us in a position for success, but I don't want to do things without tech, but I also know there's some time pressure on this. So I guess I'm looking to, to Guilford and Tracy at this point to figure out what they think, you know, now versus a week or so ago is a couple of weeks ago is realistic for them versus what they were hoping to get done. So I was going to put out some dates here. I see Tracy's hand is up. and I'm going to come to you in a moment, Tracy. Um, so if you bear with me for a second, um, I, spend some time today just looking at our calendar, looking at the town council's calendar and try to come up with a sort of sense of what realistic dates could be. Um, and it definitely would mean what I'm looking at would, would definitely have a postponement for TAC. They're not, there's, they would, it would be like September 23rd would be uh, the date by which um, we would need to hear from TAC. Um, but that raises the question for Guilford and for Paul, is that getting too late for what they need? Because according to the schedule that I've been sketching out here, um, the council vote would be October 4th. And um, so that would be the soonest that I can envision um, a actual council vote on this particular proposal. Um, and pushing it faster than that, I'm not saying it's not possible, but I think it would be difficult. So I'm wondering, first of all, before we go to Tracy, um, from Guilford's perspective and Paul's perspective, is October 4th council vote really putting a, a real uh, a problem? Does that create a real problem for you in terms of what you need to do to get this up and running? We can't hear you, Guilford. That's because he's cursing me, but that's all right. <laughs> No, he's had, having this trouble with his computer when he switches okay. formats. Okay, it's all right. No, nope. he, he just go thumbs up or thumbs down. <laughs> so um, thumbs up, yeah. thumbs up. Okay, that would work for you because I think if that works for you and it doesn't, uh, I think that's a realistic date. And I'm going to take the committee through the steps 
and um, see also uh, Tracy's taking her hand down and I certainly want her to get into this conversation. I think Alyssa makes a good point that probably the actual discussion and thoughts that uh, Tracy had with her committee at the last meeting probably should be held in abeyance uh, until um, she has a chance to have a quorum and then, then we would be very much interested in what, what transpired. But I think we could set a schedule. And um, so that's what I'm thinking right now. But before we turn to that, um, do is there anything else people want to add to these decision points? Because essentially, in my mind at this point, these are the, the core questions that came out of our discussion with Guilford and the presentation. Um, TAC now has them. We very much want to hear what TAC thinks about this. Then it comes back to us. Um, and the question, I think that as long as we get the report from TAC um, before the public hearing, um, we don't need to, I mean, because we're still going to have a discussion after the public hearing. So my thought is we would set a date for a public hearing. And that would be September 23rd, which is on our calendar, a date that we actually, it's an optional date for a meeting. Um, and by the way, September 16th, Alyssa, according to the calendar I'm looking at has been canceled. There's, so we will not be meeting on Yom Kippur. That, that's been removed from the calendar. But the next date would be September 23. And my suggestion was maybe to set, well, to set that as the public hearing day and also the absolute deadline for tax report. Um, TSO would vote on the 30th, the following week, which is also a scheduled meeting for us. Um, it's marked as a regular meeting. Um, and then uh, we, that would go to a council vote on October 4th. The council does meet on October 4th. So that's one suggestion. Alyssa, please. I may, I'm sorry, George, I was trying to, to type and listen and sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't. So you were referring to potentially because of the shifts, TAC, the TAC report not getting to TSO until the date of the hearing on September 23rd, right. which I'll complain more about in a moment. Sure. But then you were talking about TSO taking a vote during the night of the hearing. So no, that no, we'd be the ready following week, the following week. The 30th, yeah, that, so that be additional... Meeting. Right, yeah, a week that originally scheduled TSO exactly, meeting right. for the twenty third. I'm suggesting back to back. Yes. Okay. So, and then that way we're prepared for that first October meeting. That's so right. here's where we can reflect back to the the deliberation we had last time around uh, Darcy suggesting that it would be fine to get the TAC report at the same time as the hearing, and I pointed out that realistically we need to publish a legal hearing. This is not a public forum. Right. We need to publish a legal notice or a public hearing about what? And if we don't know what the recommendations are because we haven't heard from TAC what their recommendations are and we're not doing very much with the recommendations ourselves while we're waiting for TAC, right? We're mm -hmm. not just looking for TAC to, we're not having a four hour discussion about this and then asking TAC to just confirm what we decided. <laughs> we're actually depending a lot on their expertise. We need it not only more than the day of the hearing so we could, you know, actually read it before we got to the hearing. But also then there's the question of if we're not going to get it until like a couple days, I mean, the 23rd is just too late. If that's the hearing, we can't get the report on the same mm -hmm. day because we're not going to read it. I mean, that's ridiculous. So if we get the report like two days ahead of time, right, figure, that's kind of the standard worst case scenario. We get it two days ahead of time. Then I could live with that if that if that is going to enable TAC to actually have at least one quorum meeting. What I'm concerned about then is then we just get into the details, which we obviously don't have to hash out in detail in a public meeting. It can be more of a housekeeping thing to a point, mm -hmm. but there do need to be parameters of what we put on the hearing, right? Because we aren't gonna say, make the road go one way this direction and then have it be that TAC recommends it's the other direction. Like that, that's not a sensible thing to do. Or we're not going to say, remove the parking from X place. And then TAC says, no, actually the parking should have been there. So while you can to some extent do that with a hearing, there's always the question of what, how much does the hearing encompass? So if we're careful with the way we word the hearing, which I think we can probably be as long as we get Guilford and Tracy's input as to how we word the legal notice, we can probably get by without having had a chance to discuss as we had 
planned at our last TSO meeting. At our last TSO meeting, we said it's going to go to TAC. TAC's going to give us recommendations. We're going to discuss the recommendations. Then we'll know what to put in the hearing notice. That's mm -hmm. been precluded. We're not going to know what to put in the hearing notice. Mm -hmm. So therefore, if we just write a fairly open-ended hearing notice, right, mm -hmm. then we should be, oh, I think we'll be okay. And so I guess the question is then, if everybody's comfortable, one, with a fairly open-ended hearing notice, and then the other part is whether or not TAC feels like, just given the various pressures their committee members are under, is it realistic to expect a report from TAC to TSO just to be distributed electronically at least two days in advance of the hearing on the 23rd? Good, I think that's a couple of things, but let's go immediately to that question. And Tracy, and what you're suggesting, Alyssa, is a, a, a deadline date of, of September 21st. So Tracy, what do you think of these deadlines, first of all, on these dates? Um, so I think, I mean, our approach, so, I mean, just quickly to uh, uh, Alyssa Brewer's first question about just our meeting today is um, like we did, you know, one of the people who suggested that we could meet and just discuss things without any votes or decisions was um, the member of TAC who's been a previous town administrator. Um, and <laughs> we, I mean, really, we wanted just the opportunity um, to talk to find out more details about the project because we had a lot of questions. We hadn't discussed the project yet right. um, to go over the memo in detail. So it was just, you know, brainstorming. We were talking about, there were no decisions made. It was no deliberations. Um, and we will be doing those at our next meeting. Uh, yeah, I think that- I mean, we I had next, we had, and it was, you know, it was more of a subcommittee. So at our last TAC meeting that did have a quorum, we agreed that like a subset of members could take this on and meet and discuss it. Um, in terms of our schedule, so we, we do believe, I do need to hear from one more member of our five members and we need four members for a quorum. We do believe we have a quorum for next Thursday, which is the 12th. Um, to meet at a regular time and Guilford is available then mm -hmm. to advise us as well because he's the most familiar with the project right. um, and about the details from the DPW perspective. Right. Um, we are not meeting on the 19th or the right. 26th. Okay. We were talking about possibly doing a site visit on the 2nd um, and that will be when the students are back too and we can just you know see how that's working. Um, and after we do have a quorum, like we will be drafting some, some of our ideas about um, recommendations, considerations for the TSO and the council. At the current time, I don't see us, I see us breaking down, you know, somewhat how Darcy did in the memo that she, the list that she gave us right. about the different elements. Decision and point, I yeah. see us doing something similar to what we did with Pomeroy Village is that even if we take votes on different elements and say, you know, we support this, we don't support that. But I think more as an advisory committee that what we would do is we would say, these are the key things we're focused on and these are what we want the TSO and the council to consider, you know, including mm -hmm. some safety type recommendations about if you're gonna have a crosswalk, you know, what the sight line should be like. And, you know, we're concerned about pedestrian safety with the kids at the park. You know, mm -hmm. we want to make mm -hmm. sure that, mm -hmm. I mean, for example, um, you know, one of the main causes of children who are pedestrians getting injured or killed are when vehicles don't see them. So we want to make sure that if we do have parking on both sides of the street, you know, that it's done in a way that can be done safely. Right where children are not gonna be chasing a ball and running between two large minivans or SUVs. Right. And so how can we keep that area safe for everyone? Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, to the point that Alyssa just raised about in terms of a public hearing, like I don't see us saying, this is definitely what you should do. I just say that these are things we thought about. These are what, what our advice would be but it still would probably need to go through TSO before the public hearing if you want to provide like a, like this is exactly what we're proposing type of 
um, information before the public hearing for the public mm -hmm. to respond to. Mm -hmm. um, additionally, like some of the topics like related to parking and so on, there are other committees or staff who are also looking at those. And so I'm not sure how much it is within the jurisdiction attack to issue specific recommendations on those. Like, for example, um, the question about residential, I mean, the town center parking permit, like on the north side, the north section of that stretch of North Pleasant Street, mm -hmm. there's currently all the spaces currently on the west side are mm -hmm. permitted parking. And, you know, it's been pointed out to us that um, that for most most of the properties that those are adjacent to have their own off street parking. Like there's no commercial in that vicinity right now that is residential with parking behind the buildings. And um, a lot of times those spaces aren't used, you know, they're used more when UMass is in session, but like who's actually parking there and could there be an opportunity for there to be, I mean, do those spaces need to continue to be um, permitted parking? Could they be metered parking? Would that be a way to increase the metered parking supply? But that again, the, the thought, kind the of thought, issues. Yeah, it's not. So really I mean, tough, some of those things right? are really beyond our scope. Yeah, like right. in addition, so you, you them. You yeah, them. I mean, disability access committee. Right. Um, right. You know, one of the things that's come up, like, would there be handicap parking near the park, for example? You know, so that if you do have children in a wheelchair or a parent in a wheelchair, like, how can you access the park? Where would you park? Those kind of things. Um, mm -hmm. There, are, we would. I mean, we might say something in our memo about you know this uh, you know this would be helpful to have the um, feedback from the disability access advisory committee um same with the issue related to like street trees right like that's not our area either right. exactly um, so so i mean i think there's the 23rd is the 23rd i mean i think that i would make? think so you know because it is yom kippur on september 16th like we would we yep. are proposing to meet on the second. We wouldn't, we typically meet on the first and third Thursdays. I mean, we could probably have some memo to TSO on the ninth, but I don't know when your meetings are scheduled before the 23rd, if you're not meeting on the 16th. But if exactly. you want to review something, I don't know how far in advance. That, the, the yeah, hearing. that's a discussion I think this committee needs to have this evening, um, uh, what the uh, role is in terms of but good. It sounds like the 23rd is a date, or 21st, excuse me, is a date you could meet and that you'd be providing maybe even sooner some kind of written document where you'd be offering us your thoughts. Um, I mean, I would anticipate that we would submit something like even, no. you know, before the holiday, like on the 14th or the 15th okay. or something, like if we've been, meet, if we are able to meet like off of our regular schedule. Um, but again, I don't know for the purposes of the public hearing. Yeah, that's and a question. Making like information to, yeah. to the yeah. public, like how many, what details right. have to be there. So that's where I need to hear from my colleagues um, so. right now. Thank you, Tracy, and we'll come back you. to you in a second. But I need to hear from my two colleagues because, um, in my own mind, um, it's not clear. I mean, how detailed? Maybe there's just a, a matter of, of just law here. How detailed must the um, uh, the proposal be? when it goes before to the public. Obviously, the more detailed, the better, because we'll get better public feedback. Um, but there are obviously going to be some details that simply won't be determined or can't be determined. Um, and how important is it that, that the public actually have read or that we have read the TAC advisory memo, um, which is an advisory memo to us, is to help us in our deliberations. How important, this is a question, I, I'm just asking it. How important is it that that somehow be available to us and or the public before a public hearing versus a public hearing that, as Alyssa suggested, could be sort of open-ended in its description where we give it as much detail as we think we can in good conscience give it, but it's really more about what's the public think, um, not just what does the public think about tax you know, memo and do we really need tax memo um, before we have the public hearing. That's a question. Now, I think Alyssa suggested that we do, and she can speak to that some more. I have questions in my own mind about whether that's absolutely necessary, but this is helping me sort of clarify it. Um, my, under my thinking is that we want to hear from TAC. They give us their advice, we value it, and we need their memo. 
We want to hear from the public. We value their thoughts and we have a public hearing. Um, but those are two very different streams and they're both valuable to us because we're the deciding body. Um, but is there like a timeline where everything has to be in sync? Um, and that's a question. So what, what do the, I think Alyssa's already spoken to it, but she can speak to it some more. I'm wondering if that, that we really need, um, you know, how high degree of specificity do we need for the public hearing? Um, and how important is it that the TAC advice to us um, be something we've already, we talk about before we have the public hearing? Because I'm suggesting, I don't think we do have to do that. Thoughts on that? Because that impacts the timeline very much. Um, if we have to get another meeting in before the public hearing, um, just to talk about what tax memo says, um, I mean, we can do that, but it's going to push everything off some more. And I'm wondering, why do we need to do that? Because we will talk about the tax memo. Um, it'll be after the public hearing. Thoughts? I'm proposing um, that we don't need that. We, as long as we get the TAC um, memo in time for our final deliberation, and as long as we have a public hearing where the public has a, a fairly good idea of what is being proposed, um, that's what matters. But I'm open to arguments that say, no, 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 that's, that's not enough. It's got to, that public hearing has to have, you know, the highest level of detail, uh, including the TAC memo, and we need to have talked about it before we hear from the public. I, I just don't see that. But, and if, if you agree with me, then my schedule works. If you don't, then we need to schedule another meeting um, before either September 23rd or we do the uh, public hearing uh, at a later date. And hence the council vote would then be October at the earliest would be October 18th and maybe even November. I don't know, I'd have to look. So before I turn to Tracy, I'd just like to hear from my colleagues because we're the ones who have to make a decision here. So you're calling and asking me? Well, I, 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 what I'm hearing right now is nobody's saying, Ryan, you're wrong. We have to have, or yeah, maybe a listen. I, know, I guess yeah. that I'd like a little bit more. Um, one is that uh, Guilford did say something at the last meeting about what date he would like to have a decision by if possible and the consequences of not meeting that date and whether he's i uh, can repeat that for us today or amend it and update it whichever is more appropriate that would be helpful so that we understand what it is that we're trying to trying to get to is to an end result and the other thing and i have to turn back to Alyssa, is a lot more experience from her longer service on the select board than I had, and plus her role as chair in that um, body. But what is the nature of the notice that is most, um, that has been determined to be necessary? And what was the notice that we had for the, uh, the, the Pomeroy Lane intersection? So those are questions that I think I need response to in order to understand where we can go. So I guess first to Guilford, if he wishes to weigh in um, on uh, the timeline overall, he said that October 4th is a date he can live with. I guess the question Andy is asking is what's sort of the, the absolute limit to that, or do you know? Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Um, what this is all new, and I understand it's all new. It's all kind of new to us, kind of doing this as well. So, if we can have some type of decision on the on the concepts by November, end of November, that would be good because we still would need to finalize the plans and work it into the work schedule for next year. Um, so that's kind of how we're seeing it now. Um, Okay. When, we did, when we did Pomeroy, we, we voted on a concept plan, but if you actually are going to vote at your, at your hearing or have a hearing for 
parking changes, then you do have to have some very big specifics in there about what your parking changes are. But if you're going to vote the concept plan, then come back at a later time to vote um, for the parking changes, that, that would work into the time period as well. Okay, so there could be two separate votes. One is the concept plan, and the second would be uh, the parking changes, which also have a public hearing attached to them. Um, so there would be two separate public hearings if that's what we did, which, okay. But you're saying November. Um, I'm not encouraging that we wait that long. I hope we don't, but um, that you could live with uh, another couple weeks or a month even if that were necessary. What I'm trying to get from my colleagues is why they feel that it's so important that we have um, the TAC memo before we proceed to a public hearing and why we need to talk about the TAC memo. I guess the thought would be that there might be suggestions in there that could affect what we would uh, wanna to present to the public. So that's, that's a perfectly reasonable argument. Um, and maybe that's why we need to do it. My thought is that, um, you know, as long as the public has a general sense of what's going to happen. Um, but for instance, if, 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 if in the plan we present to the public, it's one way going one direction, but then later, based on what we read from TAC and other inputs that we get from other bodies at a later meeting, we decide to have it go a different direction. Is that a big problem? Um, with parking, I think it has to be pretty explicit. That I understand. But for some of this other stuff, you know, if we decide that, that they're gonna have a crosswalk here. And so in the public presentation, there are a couple of places where crosswalks are being proposed. And then later one or two of them gets taken out or we move it somewhere else. And that's what finally gets voted on. Is that a big problem? I don't see that as a big problem. As long as the public has a chance to weigh in and give us their thoughts, because we don't have to do what they suggest. You know, um, We take it seriously and we consider it. But um, so that's where I'm wondering why we need to have um, a discussion of tax memo, right? Because then you'd think, well, then also we should have a discussion of if we get something from a public shade tree committee and if we get something from um, you know, the disability advisory committee, we should also wait for that and then have a discussion about all that. And then we go to the public hearing. We can do that. And I, I'm not saying we shouldn't. I, I'm not convinced that we should, but that's what one way we could do it. We wouldn't go to the public hearing until we had everything that we wanted from the various committees we had sought out for advice and we had talked about it. So I guess I'm asking about a process. Is that what you'd prefer? Um, and if that's the case, then this will take a little bit longer. And that'd be true probably for all. I mean, the other thing is I think going forward for any kind of, 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 of proposal like this, that has to be built into the steps and um, will mean that this will take longer. Again, not the end of the world, but Maybe someday, well, so that's the question. Alyssa has her hands up. Um, I'm sorry, Alyssa, I didn't see that. Go ahead, please. I was waiting to see if Andy had more to say because I don't want to. Okay, we can take our time. There's no rush here. I mean, we, it's just not an easy question. So please go ahead. So we had this conversation already mm -hmm. a different way when we had a different schedule, when it was not going to be a problem for us to have a TSO meeting because we had one on the 26th that we were already going to have a report in advance of. And so on the 26th of August, we were going to have had in hand at least two days ahead of time a report from TAC that we could then decide what we were going to put in the public hearing notice. We were going to, we had to finalize exactly what the dates were to get the newspaper publication, blah, blah. But, and then we'd have the hearing. So the value of tax report to TSO's thinking, the value of tax report to the public's thinking, to DAC's thinking, to anyone's thinking, doesn't change because we've run into quorum problems. So you want to have a good quality hearing, yes. whether you're having quorum problems or not, rather than saying, well, we checked off the box, so who cares? Mm -hmm. So 
I can appreciate that there are a number of different ways of doing this. There is not one right way. There is, I think, a wrong way to do it, which is to have it be, as I described last time and have described in the past at town council meetings as well, a brainstorming session. A hearing is not supposed to be noticed in such a broad way that people say, oh, you're talking about parking around Kendrick Park. Well, I'm coming to talk about how I don't think you should have that park there without a playground or or without a fence. I don't think you should put that playground there without a fence. And I'm coming to talk about how I don't think it's right that people who live in big buildings can buy residential parking permits downtown because you've made it so broad that literally Mm -hmm. there's no reason for them not to talk about all this. Exactly, right. So at the same time, we, we talked about the fact that you don't want to make it so narrow that, that somebody would argue later, oh, you have to have a different public hearing now, right? Because you said, we're going to have it go one way this way. And so everybody said, that's cool. I'm fine with that. I'm not going to show up at the public hearing. And then we have a meeting where nobody shows up, but we're in a meeting. And we say, you know what? We're going to change it to have it go the other way. And the public says, hey, wait a minute you noticed that public hearing is having the one-way street go that way. Like, how are we supposed to know you were even entertaining the idea of So there is something to be said for having it be broad, but not so open. What's that idea about an open mind, but not so open that like it just falls out kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And so I think that we can be thoughtful about it. I think that that's a separate yet related issue to whether or not we have tax report to help us with that thinking just like eventually we'll want DAC's report. And as you indicated, we could demand that we get all the reports first and we're not scheduling a thing until we've read all of them. That's probably not realistic though, right? I mean, some organizations might function that way if they didn't have to do open meeting law, (laughs) but Mm -hmm. given open meeting law, it's Mm -hmm. probably not realistic to expect all the different committees to be able to fall into some beautiful timeline where we'll get everything ahead of time and we won't be making Guilford wait six months while we do that. So, you know, in terms of trying to address that difference without just kind of throwing up our hands and saying, well, there's no point, it's too complicated, I think is just figuring out what we think the, the parameters are. And like I said, Guilford and Tracy's input, I think will both be important for that. Guilford's in particular because of his experience with hearing notices as well as other staffs to make sure we kind of get it right to cover ourselves, to, to cover ourselves from the idea of having to do it again, but also to cover ourselves from the standpoint of encouraging the public to show up for a particular reason, because we're gonna take away permit parking, because we're gonna make a street one way, potentially one way or the other. Um, We're gonna put in crosswalks or not, or we're not even considering putting in crosswalks. I mean, giving them some sense of why they should bother to come rather than saying later, well, we had a hearing, you should have known about it, but the hearing notice was confusing or weak and people didn't come. And then we get complaints later. We can't prevent all complaints, but we can try and be thoughtful. And of course, open meeting law requires some specificity, right? It's not going to just be parking around Kendrick Park or streets around Kendrick Park. Obviously, that's too broad. Um, So I think we can get there, George. I don't think you and I are as far apart on this as we might seem to be in that, you know, the reality of the deadline is coming up against us. I think it's important that we, TSO, because I believe we have expressed repeatedly how much we depend on TAC. I think it's important for we TSO to have gotten the report a couple days ahead which of the hearing, which Tracy has indicated is plausible, which is good since we were planning to get it a month before the hearing, uh, well, three weeks before the hearing before. So it's good that it's still plausible that we can get it two days before the hearing. So we haven't compressed the timeline completely. Um, So that's important, I think, for TSO and town council members who are going to show up at this hearing to have seen what TAC has to say, because everybody depends on their expertise. I'm not sure where we feed in DAC and Shade Tree into this, and and I look to Guilford for suggestions on that, just based on the scope of the work and the nature of the hearing, and when, because depending on when they meet, right, if we, if we hit the timing wrong, they may not have another meeting until well after the hearing. And so we, we wouldn't necessarily get the report ahead of time, but they would know that they should be prepared themselves to come as individuals if they can't meet as a group. 
So I think we are not in as bad shape as we might be. I think even though we've completely lost the timeline that we thought we had, which is unfortunate. Well, that, yeah, no, it's just a suggestion. Yeah, it's just a suggestion. I mean, really. It's unfortunate that it's yeah. not going to work out the way it was going to. I think we can still do the 23rd, though, and I think we can still have TAC information two days ahead, and I think that'll be valuable. And I do just want to make clear that, you know, we do have to think through in terms of the hearing notice what we're going to say, if we're going to say anything about permit parking, because as Tracy indicated, as Paul has indicated to us, Sean Mangano and perhaps others are working on a proposal. When I say they're working, because I don't want to say they're working on permit parking because they don't get to decide. They're working on a proposal to change permit parking because that's a town council decision. And so whether or not that's going to be at this stage of the game, right, or be something that gets discussed over the winter into the spring, I don't know. Um, it could certainly come up as part of the public hearing, depending on how much information we think we have mm -hmm. available mm -hmm. associated with that particular issue. Mm -hmm. And the only other thing I wanted to make sure I'm, I'm clear on, because I'm already grumpy about the former town administrator, who I know very well should not have said that you could continue to meet <laughs> and not count it as deliberation because you're just getting information. But that's information your other members don't have. Right. And that's just the simple fact. So that was a poor choice on that individual's part. And I'm sorry, that individual who I'll have speaks with had that conversation. With. But in the meantime, the other part is a subset, a subcommittee still needs to post their meeting. It still needs to be a posted meeting. There is no such thing as a subset of people who are meeting that there's one, one person can do something other than that. It's a posted meeting. And he may not agree with that either, but that is the fact of the matter right now. So I think we're okay. I think that we just need to have, George, assuming that you continue or, you know, obviously we'll have this separate conversation with Evan, with Evan coming back, how you're helping us manage us through this because of the fact that we do have the timing issue. So staff will need to let us know when we have to have the wording right for the hearing notice. Yeah, I right. think the, the timing issue, Alyssa, is a bit of a, of a, of a red herring here it, it, because it's not, I mean, I just put out a, a suggested calendar and what I'm hearing from you and, and Mandy can certainly weigh in here, but I'm thinking as I'm hearing you and thinking about it some more, that it may very well make sense for us to have a session um, before we set the, before we have the public hearing, we have a session to TSO where we talk about the reports that we have solicited um, from a various committees, certainly TAC would be the most prominent one, but in this case, there might be at least two others. And uh, so let's say we set uh, a date of September 23rd, um, just hypothetically, as the date by which we need reports back from these various bodies, including TAC. And, and at that meeting, or say it's September 21, so at that meeting, we would meet, and that's what we would do. We would go over their reports and discuss them, and we would, um, uh, come to an agreement as to what uh, the uh, public notice essentially was going to consist of, and we would then um, proceed to the public hearing. Um, we, we, yeah, we have a 14-day notice uh, period for the public hearing, but th that's, that shouldn't uh, drive this process. It should be driven by what we as a committee think is the best way for us to get the information we need in a reasonable and timely fashion. So, I think we could change this schedule that I put out here is perfectly, it's just a suggestion. So instead of the 23rd for um, a public hearing, we could push it off uh, two weeks. And that on the 23rd, we would um, um, be actually discussing what we got from um, the various committees we asked uh, to hear from. Um, so it sounds like that's an integral part of this process. And my thought that, you know, as long as we consider it at some point, um, even if it's after the public hearing, that's okay. But what I'm hearing from you, and as I think about it, clearly there are going to be some things that these committees are going to suggest to us that would, I would assume, would shape what we think this uh, proposal is going to look like when it goes to the public. So I think it, it does make sense for us to slow this down just a bit, add at least one other session um, where we get these reports and then we talk about them. And at that meeting, we, we're going to have to shape the, uh, the hearing notice. Um, and so we'll slow things down a bit, but I don't see, yeah. Your thought on that? Because I just, these dates, I just, you know, plugged in um, to try and get us to October 4th, but that's just arbitrary. 
Right. I mean, we thought we were going to be able to make it and, you know, things happen. I mean, that's well, just the reality. Things well, don't also happen. just, yeah, the process is important. So um, it, it's beginning to sound, seem to me that it is important to us as a committee to actually ponder the advice that we get from the various groups that we've reached out to. Now, if they don't get it to us in time, that's not our fault. Okay. So that, if that happens, that's just too bad. But get it and talk about it before um, we actually go to the public um, so that we have, uh, right, as opposed to what I was suggesting originally, which is, at least for this particular um, proposal, um, you know, we'll talk about what TAC has to say after we have the public hearing. And I'm beginning to think maybe that's not such a bright idea. Well, I really, else, yeah, yeah. That's, that's why it's so great to have deliberation, right? I mean, like, I... I appreciate that that you are willing to to think about that differently and to and to consider that more. I mean, I don't want to drag this out forever, but I do really appreciate the idea of getting all that input because another way to think of this as is once we get all that input, say there's universal agreement that one of the one piece of the proposal is just a bad idea. And then we as a TSO may say, you know what, that is such a bad, you have convinced us, you know, individuals coming in to see us, but also, you know, TAC, DAC, public state trade, you have convinced us that doing this particular part of the proposal is just a terrible idea. We're not even going to hold a hearing on that particular issue because we think that's a non-starter. We're not required to hold a public hearing on anything, but what we think we might want to change. Right. And so, I'm going to assume that everyone's going to love all parts of the proposal because, of course, it's a brilliant proposal. But it would be it would put us in a much stronger position as we talk to our constituents to say, this is why you need to come to this hearing. You know, these different bodies have already told us these things. We've come to this new way of thinking about, you know, this area is so important to the vitalization of our downtown. We really need you to come help us make the rest of the decisions associated with this, as opposed to what do you randomly think about what we might be doing there, right? Leaving it so open-ended. So I think it, it does sound fabulous to try and, you know, like you said, if not everybody makes our deadline, but if we give them, if we to give them a month's notice, one yeah. assumes that they will get close to doing that. And then they had the chance. <laughs> and, right. Right. and then right. they can show yeah. up at whatever public hearing we end right. up having. Exactly. I think we just need to work out in terms of the timing then when it is thinking about the town council meetings like you had already done, George, yep. thinking about the future town council meetings, then backing that up in terms of a hearing when it has to go in the newspaper, right? To make sure we, we have our bases covered. Right. Well, that, I, what, I would, what I would do is I would write up uh, for, uh, assuming for Evan, but whoever finally becomes the chair of this committee, I'll just write up based on our discussion, uh, a potential timeline, which would include um, a, a separate meeting um, before we actually go to a public hearing. And there are other things. There's the, the, the two week notice, advance notice that complicates things. But I will, I will present a, uh, a suggested calendar or calendars um, for whoever is the chair to consider and we put it in the packet. Um, and uh, I think that's where we can leave that um, for the moment. Uh, Tracy, your hand has been patiently up. Uh, is there something you'd like to add to this discussion? Um, okay, um, so one aspect is that, um, I mean, I, I think that a time frame where we give TSO like our full memo um, by, you know, after we've had the next like two meetings, two meetings with the quorum is no issue. And yeah. I mean, I see us getting that by, based on my current estimation by like mid-September or something. So it would be well be before great. the public hearing. I mean, in, in, in addition, if the committee is talking about advertising sooner, the public hearing, I know at the last TSO meeting, right, you're hoping to advertise it for, say, a month or something. I, I don't, I mean, I understand that the committee is busy, um, but if you did want sort of a summary update from us, like Guilford has been participating in our meetings too, in terms of anything that we based on the discussions at the T at the TAC meetings, like if there's any aspect of the proposal that came from the town manager and the DPW um, that we would have 
that TAC has major concerns about that will probably not be in our recommendations. Like I could flag that for the, I could give a brief update and flag that for TSO if you're interested. Um, also, just in terms of the decision point list that came from Darcy, I mean, I think that we would be able to address most of those questions. The one that I feel, well, there's a few related to the parking that I don't feel that comfortable with, including the should the parking permit currently be provided, because I think, you know, because of these other efforts that are going on related to parking, that's sort of outside of our scope. Yes. Um, but then also that question right above it is should 25 on street parallel parking spaces be added to maximize parking? So I think that 25 is just such a specific number. I mean, if you want to change that question to be like, should there be on street parallel parking spaces, I think, you know, definitely the TAC could respond to that and we could make some suggestions about, you know, where they should be or how they should be spaced or how can it be done in the most safe way and those type of things. But the 25 number, I, I mean, you can see that it could be calculated a lot of different ways and it wouldn't always be 25. Um, so. so we create a decision points document and it seems to me, this is a question to my colleagues as well, um, but a comment from me that um, we would also send this, I would envision the chair sending this to um, the Disability Advisory Committee, but obviously they would not be commenting on most of this. <laughs> um, or maybe we would have to just add a decision point that would uh, address them specifically. But just as we send this to TAC, there's certain things that TAC's not going to address because it's not in their domain. Um, most of this is not going to be discussed by necessarily by disability access. So I'm envisioning the decision points document as a list of decisions that we, based on our based on presentation we've gotten in our initial discussion or discussions, these are things that we see as key decision points. And we'd like some input from various bodies on this. And we'd like it within say the next month at the most. We'll set a deadline. And once that deadline comes, um, we will assemble whatever we've gotten and we will meet at least we'll meet one more time as a committee and go through that and discuss it. And then after that, um, we will make the decision about what is going to go into the public meeting uh, posting and we'll set a date, et cetera, et cetera. So I guess I see this decision points a document as a key part of the process. Um, and we may we're learning as we go, um, but uh, it would be sent to everybody that we were actually soliciting, um, though with the understanding or in the covering memo that obviously we don't expect you to respond to all of these because they don't apply to you, but those that do, um, please respond. And if you have any further thoughts, I mean, we could also just say, you know, if you have any other concerns or thoughts, please share them with us. That would be my thinking. Yeah, so I think to that um, last point is I do think that there are other um, topics that, um, that would be raised by TAC like including, I mean, just when I've been thinking about it in terms of that issue about handicap um, parking, like I understand that Amherst has never provided any on street handicap parking, you know, typically it's in lots, but that would that be something that the town wanted to look at? Um, we also, you know, because the TAC, because we're not just focused on vehicles and also just the public way, but also in terms of like bike access, you know, and do we have any recommendations related to bike access or would we want bike lanes or bike paths or you know, even bike racks in the park or those types of things? Um, so there would be space so, for you. I mean, to, there would yeah. be, yeah. right. So beyond the decision right. points you raise, but I mean, in terms of if, if TSO wanted to notice it to the public early in terms of a public hearing, I don't know if that would be helpful to you for me to give like a brief update and just say, you know, this is one part of the town's memo that we would probably not be supporting or something, or well, Tracy, you only want to see it yeah. when you have the full memo. Right. I mean, no, I understand I, yeah, if you I'm don't hearing, want it to yeah. be too iterative. Right. What I'm hearing is that uh, we want to hear from you first and from uh, the disability acts, whatever other bodies that we reach out to, we want to hear from you first and talk about that before we then proceed to the, the public hearing notice. That's what I'm hearing. So and I, I, I wonder if my colleagues are comfortable, it's just a question here, with a decision points document with, you know, where it says, please respond within, say, you know, three or four weeks or a month at the most. Um, and if you have any further thoughts or suggestions, feel free to share them. Or do you want to be very specific? I mean, there's, there's something we may have to resolve over time. But um, are you okay with the idea of just sort of, you know, opening it up to this advisory body that we're consulting? 
that if there's anything else you want to add, go ahead. Or do we want to say, please respond to the particular points that are listed here as they you know, fall within your domain? And if they don't, obviously you will have nothing to say. But in those areas that you do, please respond. Are you comfortable with also making it more open-ended? And maybe we'll learn by doing. But that's right now what I'm suggesting is somewhat more open-ended. Um, we'll decide this uh, perhaps later, but uh, okay. All right, well, um, what I'm seeing here is that um, uh, I will write some of this up and share it with you as a committee, as a group and uh, also whoever, well, maybe we'll make this decision next time we meet, but whoever takes on the chairmanship, um, I'll share with them and with you all uh, some kind of possible uh, schedule and uh, also a process that sounds like we've come to some agreement amongst the three of us at the moment that we're going to gather information first before we proceed to setting a public hearing. And we're going to talk about it. Melissa. So Andy's hand is up. Please, Andy, go ahead. Uh, uh, well, I agree generally with what you've now put forward, George, and thank uh -huh. you. Um, I do, um, I am concerned about making sure that we get to all of the correct committees and give them sufficient information that they can comment and that we have sufficient time to receive their comments. And I think about my years of being liaison to DAAC. And I think that the issue that Tracy's already identified with handicapped parking um, proximate to the playground is one that I would have expected a prior version of DAAC and probably this version of that uh, commission to uh, comment on. And I think that they also have, as they did in Pomeroy, a similar um, interest in uh, sight lines for um, crossings uh, because of the safety issues for um, people um, who are, um, have uh, limitations uh, that they're concerned about, but also just generally. The other thing is, and I'm glad you moved it down, is the Shade Tree Commission Committee, because uh, I think we know from what's happened uh, in uh, Northampton recently that uh, this that could be an issue that's listed under number three. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, it would be helpful to get an earlier read from them as to whether they, um, how, how much of a concern that they have about that issue and whether that um, issue as it is worded now, if that gets into precluding that as an option based upon what they say and I guess it's a, we want to hear from them about the danger to the trees and the value of the trees, uh, given the way that it is worded in the current number three. So sure. we want to make yeah. sure we get that committee involved too quickly. Yeah. Well, listen. Yeah, following up on that, thank you, Andy. And you make a really excellent point about, um, as we've each become familiar with various members of different bodies, we know like the kinds of things people are gonna bring up or might've brought up um, had they been at the table at that particular moment. So, and, and the handicapped parking issue, thank you again, Tracy, for bringing that up. So I think that um, George, my understanding is you will be writing this up and you will publish this. And you will send, you will CC us as T, all of the TSO as members. And in that, the only tweak that I wanted to offer is to say, based on all the wonderful things that you've said, is to point out that there will be a hearing probably in October, right? Because realistically, I don't see how we're going to have it in September, given this timeline. And, but that we want the body to submit their report as a body to TSO by September 21st. Yep. so that we can come up with an effective hearing notice by the end of our discussion on the 23rd, right? That's so nice. 
and that they and you know encourage them that it would be great even if they could send somebody right on the 23rd to follow up with any question that we could ask any questions of based on the report and obviously if we decide on the 23rd that a whole new realm of possibility has has opened up then we don't have to decide on the hearing that night but just to give people the sense of yes there will be a hearing it'll probably be in October just so they have it on their radar but we really want your report as a committee by the 21st good Andy oh uh, does I take my hand down but Paul has his hands up Paul please I just just a logistical question. Do you need Guilford here? For the, are we going to have anything for his? Ah, uh, good question. Um, I think it's a question of whether we tonight want to take on, and I'm not sure we do, but it's a question for my colleagues. Uh, the North Pleasant pedestrian improvements um, tonight. Um, it's already um, almost eight o'clock, um, and uh, we do not have decision points for this yet. If I'm not mistaken, we don't, and. Um, we might want to just postpone discussion of this. We did get a um, um, communication from a colleague, a council member, um, uh, and uh, related to this, but uh, we don't have to take it up tonight if we don't want to. Melissa? So, uh, yes, and I, I appreciate that, Paul. I'm always appreciative when we can let staff go since they've always been around for 12 hours by the time they get to us anyway. Um, I guess my only question now is, and obviously we're going through some changes in terms of leadership as part of what's going on here too. I'm assuming that we're not going to need to talk about the, the larger North Pleasant Street project at our Monday night meeting, right? We'll probably hear back from George about how he sent out, and we'll, we'll compliment him on the wonderful thing he published to all the different committees. We'll do that Monday night and maybe say something else about it, but we won't actually get into this project just like we're not gonna get into it tonight. But I think we have to understand given our schedule when is it that we're going to be, you know, what is it that Guilford wants, I guess is the, is the bottom line, right? What does he want in terms of timing and in terms of what kinds of decisions about what parts of what is actually a really large section of project to happen and, and what's gonna be the timing on that? I think that's the question for Guilford tonight so that we plan effectively, whoever is chair uh, plans effectively over the next little while so that we use Guilford's time effectively there and also tax time effectively there. So your question to Guilford is um, with this second proposal, the North Pleasant pedestrian improvements, which we have seen last week, or last, sorry, last meeting, mm -hmm. um, What's the timeline there? What does he want from us? And yeah. uh, go for it. any thoughts there, please. Again, I mean, this is this is a new process and we're kind of working it out. I mean, this project that you have, both these projects you have now are, if we get them approved, we'll be pushing them into the construction, some type of construction schedule for next year. So as long as we can wrap something up by November, December, 1st of December, then we can finish the construction plans and get some pieces of this out in the bid packages that we want to put out for the next construction year. Good, okay. So it's sooner rather than later. Um, will not be Monday night and may not be the 23rd, but um, going forward, the, the chair and the committee needs to uh, get this um, started with a late November, December date Absolutely. Okay. Alyssa? So how do we, how do we, before Guilford escapes, how do we work effectively or how does, do we, do we want to say as a committee, I realize there's only three of us here, but do we want to say as a committee that the chair will work with Guilford to come up with sort of a similar structure to this decision points document that we have on the other project to say, these are the things you'll need, I need to know generally, these are the things I need to know specifically, so that like he said at the end, he can get this sent out to the bid, the bid package, but like, is part of how much, how much of it's going to be in a hearing, you know, blah, blah, blah. Well, we haven't, we don't have decision points for this second project. Yet. Well, I'm saying but when, how, how do those magically develop? Well, we have, we have Guilford, unfortunately, he's here and we, not maybe today, but he would be here and we'd go through the, the, the uh, documents he's prepared for us in the presentation, and we would raise some questions. We also, I assume we have some questions already submitted by a colleague, and um, maybe they'll even show up uh, at the meeting, Or, but 
we would come up with a series of decision points like we did for the other project. Um, and then we would just be sending that out to any relevant uh, other committees. But um, I think Gilbert at this point is waiting for us to sort of say, well, what are some of the issues or concerns you have? And that's where we need to have some time as a committee um, and not tonight, I don't think. Um, so you're but, saying we do this on the 26th? Uh, it would, uh, looking at our schedule, when's the next time we could do it? Um, the 23rd, it would have to be the 30th, I think. Right, the 23rd, 23rd, I'm sorry. I mean, it's possible we could do it on the 23rd, depending on how much uh, time we have to spend going through the various reports we're getting back. Um, well, but I'm, I'm be, sorry, we're yeah. mixing up months here. This is my fault, George. I'm talking yeah. over you. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm talking about this month's August 26th TSO meeting, which is our only other TSO meeting in August. Right. Are we going to do it there to start this process, or is there some reason we're waiting longer than that? Uh, we could certainly have it on the agenda, as we do tonight. I mean, in theory, we could start tonight. We have half an hour. We could put it up and have Port Gilbert stay for another 30 minutes while we begin the process, but there are only three of us here. But anyway, we could start it tonight. We certainly could put it on the agenda for um, the 26th, um, but it depends on, on, on how much we get done that night. It might be more of a courtesy to him and respectful of his time if we had it set for a specific date where that was the we knew that was the date we were going to do it. So if that were the case, then it would have to be probably something like September 30th. Why can't it be the 26th? Uh, there's no uh, August 26th. Uh, only my only concern is that we're going to be dealing with um, all the inputs from various committees on that at that meeting, and no. we're going to be. I'm sorry. We're talking about different months. Uh, we're not getting we're not getting the input from TAC and DAC and Shade Tree until September uh, 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 21st. Of course, yes, right. So right, what do we have that we have to do on the 26th? And I okay. think that this is what we okay. have to do. And I'm okay. looking for some structure from Guilford sooner rather, you know, okay. in time for that meeting. So again, we're not just a giant brainstorming session. Right. Because that's a big project. Um. So what you're suggesting, again, this has to do with um, future agenda items. And uh, what do we have? Um, uh, they're Amherst College signs. That's the item. So we could do that and, and we try to do both is one option. Go for your hands up. I'm sorry, Alyssa, go ahead. I would just argue that this is more important than the Amherst College signs. And um, in terms of getting on track for, for where we're going to be. And so unless Guilford says, nope, can't be there on the 26th, that'll solve one problem. But um, if he can talk to us on the 26th, I think we need to get to the point where we have a document somewhat like this one for at least some sections of the project. Get the process started. I hear you. I hear you. Um, the Amherst College is waiting. It was supposed to, yeah, let's start with Guilford. Is the 26th of uh, this month possible for you? Uh, yes, I'm here the 26th. Okay. And our commitment to you would be that would be item number one, and we would start with it and work our way through it with the goal of creating decision points. The second question is for Paul, and it's a matter of our relationship with Amherst College. This uh, would mean that Amherst College would be in second position, and they might not get we might not get to them that night. So again, as a courtesy to them, we probably should have a meeting where they would be in the first position. Your thoughts on that, Paul? I'm sorry. I'm completely okay being the second one at that meeting and letting Amherst College go first. I'm completely okay with that. That is that's well, a project they've been pushing for a while. Okay. And I'm okay with that. Okay. And, and well, I would I would add I think the Amherst College from their perspective is more time sensitive than ours. Okay. So from, I'm hearing from the two staff members that um, basically we should on the 26th have Amherst College and then put Gilbert's uh, in the second slot. So I'm work. saying there's no point in having a second slot. You the Amherst College thing is so amorphous at this point, we don't even know which things we need a public hearing about. And so until we're going to have to get more information, we haven't, we haven't even had the opportunity yet to have staff talk to us about the Amherst College project, right? We've only heard from Amherst College. So we have to have our staff talk to us about how our wayfinding in with Amherst College, we have to know which parts, if any, of the Amherst College plan will actually need a hearing, which they might not. And so 
I think realistically, we've done this to ourselves many times in the past. I think we're only doing Amherst College then on the 26th. And so we're going to have to then put this other North Pleasant's confusing that we have multiple North Pleasant Street issues, but with the large North Pleasant project in the first position on the, what did what did we say we were going to meet in September? Well, that isn't September 23? 23 and September 30. And initially we thought, well, we still might be getting, we, we're setting the 23rd of September as the deadline for reports from various- The 21st. 20, the 21st. The 21st is the deadline, but the 23rd is our meeting yes. where we would talk about it. And that's what, you know, we could have Guilford on that, but again, he would be in the second slot. We would talk about the reports and we try to set a public hearing uh, posting, and then he could be in the second position there. So in theory, he could be on the 23rd. Or we could put him on the 30th, where he would be in the top spot. And um, so that's the options at the moment. I would suggest you just put him on the 30th and hold that. Hold that date? Yep. 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 So that I'm so, okay so, that. And that would be North Pleasant, the large project from exactly. Eastman Lane to Pine Street. Right. Good. Okay. Right. And, and for all these things, I think it's really important that the chair, Ben, which we really appreciate you stepping forward on this, George, while Evan's away, is, and, and whatever reorganization we do, is that, you know, these big projects, we need to only do one per meeting because it's, it's too ridiculous to think that we'll cram it all in. I have no idea where the Amherst College conversation, it could go really straightforward or it might not. And so if Paul's good with Amherst College, meaning largely what we're, we don't want a repeat of what Amherst College just did, right? Like no interest in that. What we need is we need staff's input and then we need to have some back and forth. So, yeah, I think the Amherst College one is going to be more complex because there are significant changes meaning they want to put a significant sign right on the north on the south common right. which they don't have before which is relocating it from the quadrangle from the what do they call the quadrant not the quadrangle but the observatory thing the octagon mm -hmm. um, and i think that's a pretty controversial thing for the town okay good um amherst college august 26th september 23 we will be discussing the reports that were due september 21 and on September 30, in the first slot would be the larger project on um, North Pleasant, and Guilford would be there for that. Okay. Yeah, Neil. Um, Andy. Paul, the only thing that I would add is because uh, this what you said is very helpful. Uh, putting it all together for uh, to give some thought to what staff within our current. Um, staffing need to have comment on it, need to offer comment and what boards we foresee needing to have comments, whether it be design review or even planning, historical commission. There are a number of different boards and I think it would be very helpful um, as you get into issues that you think are um, controversial that we get some early guidance as to whom to consult staff and board. So I know that the planning department met with Amherst College this afternoon, so I'm not sure if they got went to that level of detail, but that's a really good thing, Andy. All right. Guilford has his hand up too. Yeah. Uh, Guilford, please. So um, I just, as a, as a a starting point for your 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 comments you make back to us on your talking points and decision points. Yep. The, the proposed changes list and the memo we sent to you, does that help you? Do you need more in those proposed changes? Do you how does does that does that help with this in any way in the memo that we send? Because we can add more to it and give you more of an outline if that's if that does help, or if we're giving you too much information, we can cut it back so it's simpler. Thoughts from my colleagues. My initial response always is more information is better, but that may be dumb. I think I, but, yeah. I, think I need to look at the document again. I can't uh -huh. respond immediately. We can do it pretty quickly. And uh, 
it would depend upon what I see in the document. I think that what was nice about the decision points is, is it sort of tried to pull out from the overall plan what are the big points that are going to be controversial or need to be uh, decisions. That's why they were called that. Um, and that document has turned out to be incredibly helpful for the Kendrick Park North Pleasant piece. And uh, I, you know, I think when we look at that long stretch of road with just so many different segments, some of that may pop out of there too. But I think uh, to the extent you or your staff have identified any of those, it would be helpful to know. So I guess the answer, Guilford, is yes. Um, at least for the time being, if you would continue to share those with us, right? And, and we'll, we'll we'll put some more we'll put more effort into and try to call it out a little better. If you if you're driving around looking at the project and you think of how things should be written differently, let Paul know so she he can forward it to us, okay. and we'll we'll add those we'll add that stuff in. Okay. Um, I think at this point, what I'm going to suggest is that um, we have a set of minutes that I think we can dispatch very quickly. But before we do that, um, I wanted to just make sure that our decision points um, document, I, it sounds like we should be adding at least handicapped parking. I just wonder if, if you have the energy and the mental bandwidth. I'm not sure I do, but hopefully you can help me. Is there anything that we can add to this um, before I send it forth or I have? Um, you know, whoever the chair is, somebody's going to send this soon. Um, for instance, we, if I send this to the Disability Access Committee, don't we want to have a separate item? Um, and how would we phrase it? How would we word it? Could we take a few moments on that? Or do you think that this has got enough detail in it that they can extract from it what we're asking from them? And is there anything else that you'd want to add to this? Um, because this is, you know, a working document. I don't consider it, you know, sacred scripture here. We can add to it or change it. Um, TAC has seen it and they are going to respond to it. Um, is there anything we need to add to it? Let's say handicap parking, should that be in here? Alyssa? So first off, yep. I think you should send it as it is, but you're not just sending it. You're not right. just sending the decision point. You're sending the other material the town council got, right? And that's in our TSO packet. In fact, you can give them a link to the TSO packet. Um, so they're getting drawings too, right? They're not just yeah. getting this. So then they can yeah. look at it and say, where's the handicap parking or whatever. I mean, you. I think you don't need to change this document just like you don't need to change the drawings. I think your cover email, because it's a memo, it doesn't have to be a, an official memo. It can just be the email text right. Right. says the things we talked about and then says, for example, at our meeting, and, and you can get Tracy's wording on, on the handicap parking there by the country. You're allowed to bring that kind of thing up is what we're saying is, is what you're offering to them. Like that came up, we haven't altered this, but that that has come up since then. And I think we should just go ahead and have you, I mean, obviously it's fine for me to talk because you're doing it, not me, but I think we should, you should go ahead and send it out tomorrow. Okay. Um, and and with, just with be done with it. Right. And, okay. and that way they have as much notice as possible as they're trying to figure out their meeting schedules, right? Just like we right. just figured out ours. Right, right. They, they, yeah. Okay. I think it was a second issue besides the handicap parking. That was uh, whether there's sufficient sidelines for the uh, crossings. You can include that in the email too. That'd be fine. You probably well, don't want to mention the Northampton trees in the email. <laughs> no. <laughs> all right so um all right okay. trees are already covered in the decision points okay all right um then i'm going to uh, suggest we um we have decided that we're going to postpone discussion of the north pleasant pedestrian improvements to what did we say September something September 30th um, minutes if you can bear with me we can deal with those and then I think we are done and I think we can at least release um, Guilford and really Paul at this point if they would like to go on and do something more exciting 
So we could just take thank a moment for a minute. Thank you very much, Geoffrey. And thank you, Paul. Um, yeah, under, under on the minutes, uh, the big glaring thing is that- <laughs> You caught it uh, too. <laughs> I was Pam is not a member. Right member. <laughs> yeah, you, you've listed. been kicked off. <laughs> yeah, I was kicked off, so I wasn't listed as a member, even though I was quoted later in the <laughs> document as having yeah. said something as a member. I know. So, that, so uh, I made that. I made that change. I assume it was was Evan Ross the member who was absent. I just can't remember. That's terrible of me. But was Evan absent? Because someone was absent apparently, um, and Evan is not cited at all in the in the minutes. So I just can't remember. And maybe Emily remembers and she just, you know, it was just a slip. I mean, it's easy to make around here. I make about 30 of them every day. Um, if, if Evan was absent, then I think it's just a matter. And I made the changes uh, already. And the only changes I made um, was to take Dorothy's name off and put Andy's name on. And he, of course, was present. Um, but was Evan absent? Does anyone remember? I just don't remember. It's terrible. But um, and. Uh, uh, I don't think we have to go back to the tape, but I just can't remember. <laughs> I um, can't remember either, but I also, I know, I think I added Dorothy's name because I was using the old, um, the old template from sure, when she sure. was a member. So that's right, why exactly. she was a no, member. No, no, I'm sure that, yeah. So nobody remembers. Emily Remind me on. which set of minutes it is, George. This is, this is July 15th. This is our last, the, the most, most recent meeting. Then the Evan was week. absent. Yes. He was absent. Thank exactly. You. That's what I figured. So I made that. That's change. the easy answer. Thank you. So other than that, it was they were fine, and I would like to make a motion to accept the minutes of July fifteenth as amended and bring Andy back um, as an official member of our committee because we definitely need him. So uh, I'm going to make that motion. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Andy. Um, and I'm going to go immediately to a vote. The chair is an aye. Andy. Aye. And Alyssa. Abstain. Okay. So the vote is. Two in favor and one abstention. The minutes of July 15th are accepted as amended. Um, may I ask right. a question about minutes, George? Yes, you may. Um, since we scrambled to put together this meeting today for Monday yeah. night so that ah. we would be able to act, is yeah. somebody going to be able to take our minutes on Monday? Meaning, is Emily, do we have any idea about that, Paul? If someone can take our minutes on Monday? Um, I don't know. Usually that's Athena's job to coordinate. Right. So exactly. we yeah. can ask Emily if she's available. I, I'm assuming I'll do it because I'm already, I already agreed to do council meetings on Monday. So I'll just <gasps> <do it> anyways. <laughs> okay. So this, okay. this should, this is a Monday meeting at 630. It's the same just, time as a yeah. council meeting, but it's, it's in, in, yeah. in three yeah. days though. I'm assuming, yeah, I'm assuming Athena will ask me well, soon, but I'll be able to do it. So She's Athena's on, on Athena's on vacation. So okay, okay. we're asking you now if you're available. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please show. Great. Thank yeah. you. That's okay. awesome. Thank you all for being flexible on that. And it should not be even the two full hours, I would no, suspect. No, no, but no, no. still it's really valuable to have somebody else doing the minutes. Okay. So thank you for bringing that up, Alyssa. Um we have already dealt with future items. Um, there are no items that anticipated. We've already had public comment. Um, anything else? I don't, um, I think we're done. So actually we do, George. Oh, we do. Oh, what have I forgotten? Thank you. So Let's, well, yeah. it, it's not because you would know. I mean, this is all breaking news, right? So Darcy resigned as chair just a couple of nights ago, right? right? So this is breaking news. It's not like it was announced at town council or anything. And so she's still a member, but she's not going to be able to attend for a little while. And so Lynn appointed you. I, I know the viewing audience is thrilled to hear this explanation. And so I think at our next meeting, depending on who's going to be there, we may or may not choose a new chair, right? And so if we're not going to have everybody there, I would be a proponent of continuing with acting, but of course that would also depend on one, you and Andy agreeing to that, and two, you agreeing to continue to do it if Evan's still not gonna be back since normally that is where the vice chair steps in. And so I know at one point, our president Lynn had indicated that she could preside over a reorganization, but I don't want any reorganization meeting to take place unless all five members are there. You know whether I would be back I don't know if Evan's going to be back by Monday night. I don't. Um, He's not going to be back on Monday night for ah, sure. 
Okay. All right. Well, good. You know, and I okay. don't know that he's going to be here on the 26th either. I don't know that for no sure. Joy. No joy. <laughs> and so that puts us into September. So I, what, okay. So I guess I need to rephrase this. George, will you pretty please continue to serve as our acting chair through at least October, through at least, yeah, October, let's say that. No, August 26th with the theory that if we believe everybody's going to be, except wait, Darcy said she wasn't going to be at meetings in September either, right? That is correct. So, That's what she so said. If, if Evan will be back, right, then he's vice chair. Then yes, he would take we could over. Do it. Yeah. We could dump it over to him until we see. But I think it's, it's just not here to have us do anything else until we have at least four of us here. Yeah, I would think I would have to run uh, if Andy's agreeable. Um, I'm happy to hand it off, but if, if he's agreeable, oh, I could run the Monday night meeting um, and report back to you on what and send you whatever I've sent out. And then after that, I assume Evan will be back. Um, and as vice chair, he would be the person who would then run. I don't the think meeting. he's going to be back on the 26th. You don't? He's gone away on the 26th as well? I think so. All right. Well, I guess I need and to. And we know Darcy him. won't be here. So. All right. All right. Can you uh, make peace with that, George? <laughs> uh, well, I'm going to first reach out to Evan, and I'm going to use all my powers of persuasion and threats and all kinds of other things to make sure that he is back. Um, but if he isn't, then I guess uh, that's what we're going to have to do. I hope that's not true, but if it is, then we'll have to manage. Um, so I guess the answer well, is... Whatever is happens, good. we give you our thanks. We do. Yeah, way, way too... Okay. Well, thank you all. All right, so I will see you Monday night. The meeting has been posted. Thank you, Angela. Thank you, Alyssa. Thank you, Paul. Um, and we will deal with the appointments. And we have set our uh, agenda and uh, for the next couple meetings, at least. Anything else that I have skipped over? That any, okay, nobody can think of anything. So I'm gonna call this meeting adjourned before somebody thinks of something else for me to do. <laughs> Good night, all. Take care. Right.